Okay, working on 3.2, graph of a function, um, first problem. So use the graph of the function f shown to the right to answer as part a through m. So first of all, wants to know what f of negative 21 is. Well, I can see here, this means we're plugging in for x, negative 21. We wanna know what y value comes out. You can just tell right here that when you plug in x is negative 21, you get negative two. And when you plug in six, you can see here, here's the x coordinate six, you also get negative two. Now they wanna know 18 and zero. So if you plug in 18, you get two. You plug in zero, uh, you get negative one. So two and negative one. Okay, is f of six positive or negative? So when you plug in six, you get negative two, so it's a negative number. Okay, when you plug in negative six, what do you get? So when you plug in negative six, you get two, so it's positive. For what value or values of x is f of x equals zero? So we wanna know wherever we hit the x-axis, so where our y value is zero. So negative 18, so we'll put these in here, negative 18, comma, where else? Um, at negative three, comma, let's see, we have one more right here at 12. Okay, for what values of x is, is the function greater than zero? So it looks like the graph goes above the x-axis here to here, so that's from negative 18 to negative three. So we're gonna say, um, oh, they wanna compound inequality. So they, we put negative 18 less than X, less than negative three, and then comma. So that's everything, every X value between negative 18 and negative three, and then comma um, over here, when you go from 12 to 18, we're above the x-axis. So um, 12 less than x, less than 18. Uh-oh. Hold on. 12 to 18. And then x between negative 18 and negative three, what's the problem? Let's check it again, one more time. Oh, yes, okay, my, my mistake, yes. At 18 is greater than zero, sorry. I have brain fart. You can tell at 18 it is positive still. We did this in class, so. All right, what is the domain? So where does the graph start at negative 18 and it ends at positive 18? So x from negative 18 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 18. What is going on? I don't see anywhere where this is undefined. Negative eight, oh, sorry, negative eight, negative 21. Uh, negative 21 is where it starts. I don't know why I was looking up there. Negative 21 is where it starts. And it stops here at 18. Jeez. Okay, what is the range? So what are the y values that come out? The smallest y value we get out is negative two and the largest we get out is three. So negative two, uh, less than or equal to y, less than or equal to three was the biggest value we got out. What are the x-intercepts? We did that earlier. They were at um, negative 18, negative three, and 12. Okay, what are the y-intercepts? So it only hits the y-axis at negative uh, one. So y equals negative one. 
How often does the line y equals one intersect the graph? Okay, this one's a little tricky. So we need to look at the, the line y equals one. So y equals one is a horizontal line that goes through at one. It's hard to tell, but one's about right there. So we hit it once here, once here, and once here, so three times. Okay, how often does the line x equals three intersect the graph? So x equals three is a vertical line. And that would go like this. And it hits it only one time right there. It's a function, so it passed the vertical line test there. For what value or values does the function equal negative two? So the way I look at this is here's negative two on the on the y-axis. We want to know. When does the graph achieve that value negative two? It looks like it hits it here and here. So for what value x values? Looks like at negative 21, when x is negative 21, and when x is six. All right, for what value does the function equal three? So I'm gonna go up to three here. It looks like only once right here. And that's when x is nine, negative nine. All right, next question. Clear this. Okay, determine whether the graph um, is that of a function by using vertical line test. So is it? No, it fails the vertical line test. Okay. What are the domain? The graph isn't a function. I can't talk about domain or range. Okay, what are the x-intercepts? Okay, so what are the intercepts of the function? Well, again, this is not a function, so we're not gonna talk about intercepts. Okay, if the graph is that of a function, determine what kind of symmetry. Well, it's not a function, so. All right, moving on to the next one. All right, determine whether the graph is a function. Okay, this passes the vertical line test, so we're good. Okay, if the graph is that of a function, what are the domain and range of the function? So the domain, it starts here at negative pi and ends at pi. Okay, so domain is, they want it like an interval, negative pi, I can just type pi to pi. And the range looks like the smallest it ever is is negative one, the biggest is positive one. So, um, oh, and you know what? They are going to want a bracket here, I'm guessing. Bracket, I'm guessing, okay. Because it actually starts at negative pi and ends at pi. It also goes from negative one to one, including those two endpoints. Let's see what it does. Yeah. Okay, continue. What are the intercepts? Okay, so the intercepts, I'm guessing at once. The x-intercepts and not the y-intercept? Let's see. Looks like it hits at negative pi over two and pi over two. So negative pi over two, comma pi over two. Oops, over two. Let's see what it does here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it looks like it wants both. So I think you're gonna have to put the x-intercepts, x equals this x equals that, those are two intercepts, comma, y equals, and it hits the y-axis at one. Ah, it's not liking that. Let me check, let me have it check because I need to see how it wants it. Ah. Oh, it wants them as points. Man. Oh, it, it set it right here. Type an ordered pair, it set it. I didn't read the instructions. Okay, so these are points at negative, at pi over two, zero, that's this, that's an x-intercept. Negative pi over two, zero, that's the other one. And then zero, one, okay. Uh, technology. All right, is, is it symmetric? So it is symmetric to the x-axis, I'm sorry, to the y-axis. And that is it. Okay, so is, determine whether it's a function by using the line test. 
Okay, is it a function? No, it's not a function. Fails vertical line test. Okay, if the graph, graph is not a function. Okay, it's not a function, we can't talk about anything else. Intercepts, forget it. It's not a function. Okay, we're not talking about that. Those are easy problems because if it's not a function, we're just moving on. Okay, let me make this a little bigger. Okay, so yes, this is a function. Uh, why is it a function? Because the graph, because uh, every vertical line intersects the graph at most one point. Okay, domain and range. All right, it's hard to see this, but it looks like this, they're implying that this goes down and gets closer and has like a vertical asymptote here. That's what it appears is going on. It's hard to say. They could imply that it just keeps going down like that. I'm not sure yet. All right, so let's see what they want here. If it just goes flat down and, and never crosses the y-axis, then I have to say that the domain is uh, from zero less than x, and then it stops at five, so less than or equal to five. And then the range would be all the way down forever, which would be negative infinity, negative infinity, all the way up to the highest y value, which is two. But since it's an open circle, it never hits two. So I put two with the parentheses. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to take that. Uh, let me try this. Oh, they want an interval notation. They want interval notation. So this, I'm just going to say, zero comma to five. So we never hit the, the y-axis, so it goes from zero to five. And because that's an open circle, we never hit five. Try that. Yeah, there we go. Okay, what are the intercepts? I have only one intercept, it's right there. It appears it happens at one, zero, right? Plug in one, get zero out, so one, zero. Try not. Okay. Is it symmetric? Uh, there is no symmetry here. If we reflect it over the y-axis, it's not even there. Reflect it over the x-axis, it doesn't look the same. Um, so the graph has no symmetry. All right. Oh, cool. This is a function past the vertical line test. Um, the domain. So these arrows imply it goes this way and this way forever. So the domain should be everything, both directions. And we're doing it as an interval, negative infinity. What happens if I type INF? So it doesn't like that, okay. Negative infinity to infinity. And then the range, again, the Y values that goes forever. So it goes from negative infinity all the way up to the highest y value is two. And it actually makes it to two, so I put a bracket. Okay, what are the intercepts? So I have a couple of them. I have right here at negative two, zero, and two, zero. And then also at zero, two is the y-intercept. So I have um, negative two, zero, two, zero, those are our two x-intercepts, and then zero, two is the y-intercept. Is it symmetric? Okay, we have definitely have symmetry over the y-axis. So symmetric to the y-axis. Okay. All right. So is this a function? Yes, pass the vertical line test. All right, domain, well, this arrow goes over this way forever and this way forever, so domain should be everything. So negative infinity to infinity. And then the range, the lowest value I get here is negative four for the y value, and it goes up forever. So it actually does take on negative four for a y, but it goes to infinity when it goes up vertically with these arrows. So check it, okay. 
Now, intercepts. Uh, it looks like I have intercepts here at negative seven zero and negative three zero. And then here it looks like we're counting by three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18. This should be 21. So 0, 21. So the first one, what do we say it was? Negative 7, 0 was one of the x intercepts. The other one was that looks like negative 3, 0. And then the y intercept was 0, 21. Okay. Symmetry, now look, be careful here. The y-axis is over here. So even though, you know, if the y-axis was right down the middle, then it would be symmetric, but it's not. So we try and flip this over the y-axis, we don't get itself. And the same thing over the x-axis, nothing. So we have no symmetry. Okay, answer the following question. All right, so answer the following is this point on the graph? So first thing we have to do is plug this in, plug four in and see if what it gets out. So if we do four plus 10 over four minus 12, we get 14 over negative eight. And that reduces to be seven over negative four. Okay, so that when we plug in four, we need to get seven over negative four. So no, that point is not on the graph. So, okay, there. Because when we plug four into the equation, it does not result in negative eight thirds. Okay. Part B, if X is one, what is F of X? What point is on the graph of F? Okay, so if we plug in one here, this will be easy. We get 11 on top and one take away 12, we get negative 11. So 11 over negative 11 is negative one. So we get negative one. And I'm not sure how they want this. Okay, and then using that, what lists the point on the graph? So this just means one comma negative one. So we just wanna be able to type in the point. Okay. Okay, now part C. If f of x equals two, what is x? Okay, this one's tricky because this time they're saying the function's value is two. So they wanna know what x got plugged in. So we have to take the function, set it equal to two. And then at this point, we will clear the fractions. We'll multiply both sides by x minus 12. And we'll get x plus 10 equals distribute. So two x minus 24. And this is just a linear equation. So I'll just move my x's over to the right by subtracting x and I'll add 24 to both sides. And when we do that, we should just get x over here and over here, we should get 34. So x is 34. Okay. And then they're asking what point is that on the graph? So we need to make sure we understand when we plug in 34, we get two. We're not saying when we plug in two, we get 34. Okay, what is the domain? Okay, so by looking at this function, the only thing we can't plug in is 12. Uh, type your answer, wait, what is the, oh, okay, they want as an interval, so it's everything except 12. So that means on a number line, here's 12, we cannot have it. So we have everything, everything this way, everything this way, and in interval notation, here's the way we type that. Negative infinity, that's all the way out to the left, all the way till you get to 12, parentheses, because we don't want to include 12, union, and then parentheses, everything from 12 on to infinity. Of course, don't include 12 here either. So this basically gives you the whole number line just kind of jumping over 12. Okay, uh, what's this? List the x-intercepts of any of the graph. So to find the x-intercepts, all we have to do is figure out where the numerator is zero. So just put x plus 10 equals zero. Oh, well, you probably just solved that. X is 10. So the x-intercepts are, and we want this type an integer or simplified fraction. So the only x-intercept we have is negative 10. Okay, list the y-intercepts. 
Okay, so to find the y-intercept, that's a little different. All we do there is plug zero into the function. We plug in zero, we get 10 on top and negative 12 on the bottom. That reduces to be five over negative six. So the y-intercept is five over negative six. It should take that. Okay. All right, moving right along. How can you tell what number you're on? I don't know. Hmm. I know I'm on question nine. I know there's 10 questions, but where, how would I know that here? Yeah, who cares? Okay, let C be the function whose graph is given to the right. This graph represents the cost of using M any time cell phone minutes in a month for a five person family plan. Okay, this gives us the cost. So this is the cost in dollars for using this many minutes. So if you use zero minutes to a thousand minutes, it's gonna cost $90. After that, it starts getting more expensive. All right, so let's answer the first question. Determine C of zero. So C of zeros, when you plug zero into the graph, you get 90. All right, interpret the answer. Do they want us to actually interpret? Okay, the value represents the monthly, the monthly fee. It is the cost per month if no minutes are used. Um, C of zero represents the cost per cell phone, no. Represents the number of minutes, no. The number of minutes that can be used, no. It's, this is like, even if you, if you, no matter what you do, zero, zero minutes or more, you're gonna have to pay 90 bucks. So this is like a, a fixed cost. You could look at it as a monthly fee, okay? Determine C of a thousand. So when we plug in a thousand, we get 90 again. Okay, and they want us to interpret this. Represents the number of minutes included in the base plan. No, 90 does not represent the number of minutes included in the base plan. Uh, represents the number of minutes that can be used for no charge. No, represents the minutes used that correspond to a monthly charge of a thousand. No, represents the monthly charge if a thousand minutes are used. Yeah, this is exactly, it's how much you're gonna ch get charged if you do a thousand minutes. Okay, 4,000, when you plug in 4,450 is how much you'll pay. Okay, we wanna interpret that. It's the monthly charge, no. Represents the minutes, no. It's not the minutes, it's the cost. Yeah, it's the cost if you use 4,000 minutes. Okay, what is the domain? Uh, well, uh, the domain, I don't know. Does this graph keep going? I mean, you could use more than 13,800 minutes. Oh, wait, but if it's a month, how many minutes are in a month? Hmm, yeah, so there are a limited number of minutes in a month. So it couldn't be infinity. So let's just go off the graph. It looks like 13,800. So M has to be greater than or equal to zero and stop at 13,800. The domain implies that there are at most 13,800 anytime minutes in a month. Describe the shape of the graph. The graph starts off flat and then increases at a constant rate after the number of minutes hits a thousand. All right, last one. Okay. All right, match the following. Okay, this is, this is us just thinking. Okay, the cost of building a house as a function of its square footage. So this means, you know, how much does it build, cost to build a house as a function of square footage, meaning that if, if, this, if this is the square footage of the home, this is the cost to make it. So what do you think? Look at this graph. Is this graph, if the square footage, let's say if we had a low square footage and a high square footage, what should we expect for the cost? 
Well, low square footage means it should be cheaper. The more square footage, the more cost. So it should do something like that. So it's not this one. It's not this one. It's not this one. Mm, this one, I don't know. I mean, I would think it might be this one. Just, you know, the more, the more the bigger the house, the bigger the house, the more it costs. But maybe there's a maximum that you can actually, I'm going to go with four. Okay, the height of a ball dropped from a 310 foot building as a function of time. So if I drop a ball, it's gonna look kind of like this, right? So this is five, okay? See, the height of a human as a function of time. Oh, okay, here we go. So you, you're born, you start growing, 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 you hit your max height and you just kind of stay flat. And some people start coming down a little bit too. So that, that one belongs there for sure. The demand for hamburgers as a function of price. Okay, so if, if the price is really low, you're gonna have a lot of people want hamburgers. If you increase the price, the demand gets lower. So that should be the first one. And then the height of a child on a swing. Okay, so they're saying the height, like not how tall the child is, but as they swing, they go up and down, up and down. So it's gonna be like this. So there. Yay, I think we're done. All right, done with this one.